Escaping the Tyranny of the Domain. In this video, I'm going to talk about how the domain or the, the business domain or the industry domain has had an influence on how software has been developed. So, for example, different industries have different ideas and concepts um, and uh, things that they need to model in their software. And those artifacts, those ideas, get injected into the software and, be and the software becomes tightly coupled to, to, to those concepts. Now, some software doesn't have this problem. If you look at, say, uh, spreadsheets or a word processor, they're not, they're not specifically designed for any particular one industry or domain. Uh, they, they can do word processing or uh, spreadsheet calculations for any kind of application that they need to. But this isn't the case with modern business applications. With most modern business applications, they are tightly, com tightly coupled to the, the, the data structures that underlie them. So what is it? Why is it that we got into the situation where business applications were tied in this way and became inflexible? Well, there's really two influences as far as I'm concerned. The, the first one is the database itself. Uh, the database, uh, even in the early days of DBase, you had to specify the schema of the database. So you, you'd have tables, and each table has fields, and each fields have types. You needed to specify in excruciating detail what all the data structure looks like and what the relationships were in order to be able to create a, a data model that you could build your application onto. So it was the inflexibility of those data structures which, which originally drove the idea that you had to build your database on top of those relatively inflexible structures. What this meant was when we were developing a system, our, our very foundation would be those data structures. We would start with the data structures themselves and then the, the maintenance screens and the reports and everything else basically flowed on from those data structures. The second major influence to tie the domain into the application has been object-oriented programming. While object-oriented programming can be used for good, the, the predominant use has been to model the database internally inside the application. So you, you basically take the information, all the records from the database, and you pull them in as objects within your, within your programming environment. And then you can write business rules or business logic into your application by, by uh, loading it against these objects. And in reality, um, it, it, it looks pretty uh, compelling. I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's a good way if you're writing an application to be able to build the, the, the business logic into your application. Unfortunately, by doing that, you're building the business logic into your application. So now let's think about the success of spreadsheets and how they work and how they empower users. Well, first of all, there's, there's nothing built into the software. Yeah, there's no industry-specific logic um, that's that's been hard-coded directly into the the spreadsheet software. The user is able to put any kind of equation or calculation in, uh, is able to put in any kind of data they want, any kind of columns they want. It's an it's a very very flexible approach, and this is why many businesses still use spreadsheets rather than developing applications because they realise that the spreadsheet is actually a very very powerful piece of software. Uh, it's very flexible and gives all of the power to the users. And these are some concepts and, and, and principles which I think we should be looking towards when we're building business software that goes beyond spreadsheets. So the business applications we're, we're building, they should be having the same kinds of features as, as spreadsheets. That is, they should be generic, not tightly coupled with the domain, um, and they, they should be uh, able to be extended by users to do new and wonderful things. So my vision is for a system that gives managers and analysts the ability to define their own data structures, business rules, and automation without writing code using simple-to-use designers. The technology that's really enabled this fundamental change in approach for me has been a system called the Java Content Repository. So the Java Content Repository doesn't force you to have any specific data schema. It doesn't force on you the requirement to have uh, predefined lists of fields that you that you can store. So, 
In summary, the new technologies such as the JCR are enabling us to write applications which are far more general, far more applicable to a far wider range of industries. No longer are we crippled by having to write applications which link directly to the domain, uh, and therefore we, we can write applications which, um, as I've already done, um, can, can automate any number of industries regardless of what industry it actually is, from ISPs to, uh, to um, water care facilities or, or insurance industries or anything you like. They all have their own little rules and their, their own industry uh, requirements, but they can be modeled within within an application framework which no longer gets coupled directly to their to their business requirements.